Hello and welcome to the Marxism Today podcast. Today's episode is episode six. This will be about underconsumption. There are all of these different tensions or inconsistencies within the capitalist system that us Marxists look at. Uh, These are usually called contradictions in the system. Contradiction can be something as simple as the tension between workers and bosses. So it's not something... It's not exactly like a logical contradiction. It's something that pits two forces within the system against each other. Underconsumption is generally seen as one of the contradictions in capitalism. Underconsumption is also a crisis theory, so it's a way of explaining how capitalism goes into crisis or reaches some sort of limit and then goes into crisis. The underconsumption argument is sort of out of favor with most Marxists today, but I think that there's an important aspect to it, and understanding the underconsumption argument will help you see the next piece and the next step, because underconsumption on its own uh, won't tell you everything, but it will provide an insight into how the system works. So let's, let's start off at the beginning. What is underconsumption? Imagine, if you will, a single business, a single uh, corporation. Let's say it's the Nike Shoe Corporation or any shoe corporation. Look at how much the workers are paid and then look at the price of the product. The workers have to be paid less than the price of all of the stuff that they've made. So the people putting together the shoes are paid far, far less than the price of the shoes on the market. If this wasn't the case, the shoe company would go out of business. You need to make a profit, which means pay your workers less than the value that they create for you. Because if you're paying a worker exactly the same as the value they create, then there's no reason to hire that worker. You're just breaking even. In order to make money, you need to pay the worker less than what the worker makes for you. So in one given business, the shoe business, the workers are paid less than the price. So the workers can never buy back all of the stuff they've made. Now, they wouldn't want to do this anyway because you don't need that many shoes. But if they wanted to buy up all the stuff they made, they couldn't. They couldn't get close because... They have to be paid less than the price, otherwise the system won't function. In one given business, this is not a big deal, but you have to realize it's not just in one business. This is the case for every single business. So if we look at the entire industry, so the shoemaking industry, every business in it won't pay their workers enough to buy the shoes that they make, so all of the workers in that entire industry can't buy buy back the stuff that they've made. Well, the same is true for, say, uh, like barber shops. So all of the barbers that give haircuts have to be paid less than the price of those haircuts. Otherwise, no one's making, uh, no one's turning a profit. So in order for the owner of the barber shop to make money, they have that person has to pay their barbers less than the price of the haircuts. So barbers can't buy up all the haircuts that are being sold, even though they wouldn't want to, if uh, it's, it's still important to realize that they, they aren't paid enough to do that. Same thing in the restaurant industry. So all the waiters, waitresses, cook staff, everyone involved in working at that restaurant, if you took everything that they made, all the money that they made from working there, they wouldn't have enough money to buy all of the restaurant meals that they've just created. Because if they did, then that business would go under. The restaurant would not be able to survive. They need to be paid less than the value that they create. 
The problem is when you look at this in entire community. So the working class is always paid less than all of the stuff that they make. So if the working class can't buy all the stuff, what happens? Well, the ruling class, the capitalist class, is going to buy some of it, but they can't buy all of it because if they bought all of it, they'd blow all their money on buying commodities and they wouldn't have any more money left to expand their business. And that's what they want, money to expand their business. If they don't expand their business, they aren't, keep, they aren't staying competitive. So in order to survive as a business, they need to expand. So the capitalist class can't buy up all of those commodities that the working class made. They might have more shoes or go out to eat more often, but they can't buy enough shoes or go out to eat enough times to make up for this gap between what the workers make and what the workers are paid. So you might say to me, well, that's okay. There's just more stuff than they can buy. That, what's the problem with that, that there's more stuff than people can buy? The problem is that in order for the capitalists to make the profit they're looking to make, those items need to be sold. They can sit on a shelf for a while, but eventually those items need to be sold. So what can you do when the working class isn't paid enough to buy the things that they've made? This, this is where the contradiction comes in. This is uh, the piece that doesn't fit together. It's a tension that the system creates, that it needs to sell these things, but people aren't paid enough to buy the things. If you look at this, this, this could be the case in one given community. So uh, one small town might not be able to buy back all the stuff that the working class in that town makes. Well, then they just need to trade with another town, you might say. Trade is one of the ways that this is resolved by trading. Let's expand our view a little bit larger. You could look at an entire nation, and in that entire nation, the working class as a whole is still not paid enough to buy back all of the stuff that they as a whole create. So you still have that same problem. One town might be able to export enough and import little enough to benefit from this, but that means another town is losing. It's a kind of a zero-sum game. And the problem is that each time you can back up to a larger scale, but you always have a problem with that larger scale. So you can get to the point where you look at the entire world, and the working class of the world is simply not paid enough to buy back all of the products and services that the working class of the world creates. And the ruling class of the world can't buy enough to make up for that, otherwise they won't be expanding. So that's the basic underconsumption contradiction. The solution to this has to do with time and space. So every time capitalism runs up against a contradiction or a limit, it's going to find or try to find some way around it to circumvent it or to make things okay again. It's going to come up with something to keep the system functioning because if it didn't, capitalism would have crashed and gone under a long time ago. Obviously, we still have crashes. We're in one today, but they could never get out of these crashes if it could not resolve this contradiction in some way. So here's a few of the ways that you solve it. You, you can solve it through space and through time. Let's look at space first. The, the initial way, this, this was a more popular way at the beginning stages of capitalism, where you would solve this by exporting to non-capitalist countries. So you'd have feudal countries or tribal countries, something like that, and you could sell off your excess goods to those countries as long as they had cash reserves to buy them up. It even happened within certain countries in Western Europe when capitalism was developed there. So you'd kind of feed off the aristocracy by selling things to them, but eventually the aristocracy runs out of money or becomes capitalist and they're trying to do the same thing. So you do it with other nations. But this is part of how capitalism spreads. This is one of the reasons why we have um, 
a lot of empires and imperialism under capitalism, and it's why we still have globalization today. Because the system is always trying to push itself further out to find those extra reserves somewhere. Now, this does become a problem when the entire world has begun, uh, has become capitalist and is functioning under a capitalist system. Because, because then there's no outsider to sell to. We have this big world fishbowl that we're looking in, or this big world lens, where the working class is still not paid enough to buy back all the stuff that they make. So then our another solution, the next solution, is by the manip manipulation of time. So this is one of the reasons why we have credit and debt and loans. Because one of the ways that you can get the working class to buy up all the stuff it makes is by taking out a loan. Okay, so we've, we've solved the problem temporarily. They've been able to buy the stuff today that they made today by taking out a loan. But the stuff they make tomorrow, we're going to have that same problem again. So then they would have to take out another loan. Now, obviously, this is not done collectively. We, as the working class, don't all get together and say, let's take out a loan to buy up the stuff that we've made. But people are presented with credit cards and tried the financial institutions try to promote and seduce people into using their credit cards into getting into a certain amount of debt because it's profitable for them but it's also profitable for the system it helps maintain the system because it allows us to temporarily buy up that extra of course if you do this each production period if you keep borrowing to buy the stuff that you've made then you go further and further into debt if you stop borrowing and you start paying it off, it means you're buying less things, or you're buying fewer things. And this will create that underconsumption problem. So this, this is one of the major tensions uh, in the system. And th there, are, there are more advanced ways of looking at it that we'll get into later, but th this is really foundational in Marxist crisis theory to, to look at the system in this way and to see this tension in it, this kind of imbalance that's always trying to be resolved, but each, each solution that we find for it makes new and different problems. This has been Under Consumption, Episode 6 of the Marxism Today podcast. <music>